Welcome, viewers, to a riveting journey of exploration and discovery in our latest video, Unveiling Mysteries. Jesus, the Kaaba, and False Gods. Today, we embark on a thought-provoking odyssey, delving into the profound revelations shared by Jesus and unraveling the symbolism surrounding the Kaaba and the Great City. Join us as we navigate through the sacred texts, drawing parallels between biblical references and the Islamic faith to uncover hidden truths and challenge conventional beliefs. Prepare to question, contemplate, and gain fresh insights into the complexities of religious interpretations. In the perception of Jesus, an immense city is predicted to emerge, attracting individuals from various nations to worship a false deity. This caution is reiterated in the Book of Revelation, where a harlot woman symbolizes a city within which the true God is blasphemed by someone or something. The video we present invites you on a contemplative journey, exploring the profound message God conveys through a sacred place revered by Muslims until its conclusion. The great city mentioned is none other than the Kaaba, nestled in Mecca. Situated at one corner of this revered structure is a stone that intriguingly parallels biblical references, like the stone rejected by builders becoming the cornerstone. However, in a twist, Satan endeavors to imitate Christ by positioning the black stone as a cornerstone in this revelation of the cobra, underscoring the importance concealed within those sacred walls known only to Jesus. According to Jesus, the allies of the Quran are actually restrained within the black stone of the cobra. In the prophetic revelations disclosed by Jesus in the book of Revelation, he unveils the emergence of a false figure, none other than Muhammad himself. Revelation 13-13 sees this false prophet establishing an image, a deceptive representation of a beast leading the inhabitants of the earth astray. Remarkably, they are not just deceived but commanded to worship this image, rendering homage to the beast. The cryptic image holds profound symbolism concerning the mention of a sword wound in Revelation, connecting to the sharp sword proceeding from the mouth of Jesus Christ, symbolizing divine judgment and authority in the unfolding events. Going deeper into these revelations, we discover that Jesus continues to unveil profound truths. Revelation 17 reveals that the beast, existing in the past and then vanishing, is destined to reappear. This enigmatic cycle perplexes those whose names are not inscribed in the Book of Life. Despite the revelation that the beast of Revelation, cast out of heaven, is restrained within the Blackstone and the Cobra, many people remain unaware of what lies inside the Kaaba. Some still believe in it, fervently praying, but Jesus warns us to flee the great city, urging us not to confine ourselves to a place that does not truly belong to us. Instead, we should seek the true Savior and join a community of believers who share our faith and will pray alongside us. It is essential to understand that the formation of the Kaaba has its roots in Islamic tradition, where Muslims believe that Abraham and his son Ishmael constructed it. Muhammad's cleansing of the Kaaba from idols upon his victorious return to Mecca restored its monotheistic significance. In contrast, the New Testament portrays Abraham as a man of faith and obedience to God, while for Muslims, he is a prophet and the ancestor of Prophet Muhammad through Ishmael. This difference in belief regarding Abraham's lineage leads to contrasting interpretations. In his teachings, Jesus denounces the unrighteous actions of religious leaders emphasizing the weightier matters of the law, such as justice, mercy, and faithfulness. He exposes the hypocrisy of those who focus on outward appearances while neglecting their inner character, urging them to cleanse the inside first so that the outside may also be clean. In conclusion, the revelations shared by Jesus about the Kaaba and the great city provide a distinct perspective on religious beliefs and civilization. The warnings and insights in the Book of Revelation shed light on the existence of false gods, deceptive practices, and the importance of discernment in matters of faith. This exploration encourages us to scrutinize our own beliefs, question the authenticity of sacred sites, and seek the true Savior in a community of genuine believers. By comprehending the hidden truths and deciphering symbolic language, we can navigate the complexities of religious interpretations and strive for a deeper connection with the divine. Jesus, in his teachings, fearlessly exposes the unrighteous actions of false gods and their followers. In the book of Matthew alone, Jesus directly confronts the scribes and Pharisees, labeling them as hypocrites multiple times. 
He denounces them as blind guides, blind fools, and blind men, using strong language to depict their true nature, referring to them as whitewashed tombs and the offspring of those who murdered the prophet. Despite his meek and mild disposition, Jesus expresses divine wrath towards those who distort the truth and teach doctrines rooted in deception. In the midst of these teachings, Jesus warns us about a time when a mysterious force challenges our belief in God, known as the Antichrist. Before delving further into this topic, let's answer a simple question. What is the Antichrist referred to as in the Bible? Options include the deceiver, the son of perdition, the adversary, and the man of sin. The correct answer is all of the above. The Antichrist, also known as the man of sin, or the son of perdition, is an individual who will appear during a time of injustice preceding the end of the world. His arrival marks one of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. This individual will deceive many through false miracles and claim to be Jesus, but later he will proclaim himself as God. He will travel the world, enticing people to follow him with promises of food, wealth, and an end to suffering. As a test to humanity, God will grant him the ability to perform miracles, such as raising the dead and displaying great wealth. However, despite these apparent divine powers, the Antichrist will not be able to heal his own bodily deformity. He will send his army to fight against those who refuse to believe in him. False gods are individuals who claim to speak on behalf of God, but have their own hidden agenda. Jesus warned his disciples about the dangers posed by these false teachers, urging them to be vigilant and discerning, recognizing the true intentions of these charlatans. While Jesus displayed compassion and patience towards those who sought truth and guidance, he responded with righteous fury and bold conviction when confronted with religious hypocrisy. God provides signs regarding the Antichrist to alert people and keep them vigilant. However, it is essential to focus on God rather than constantly seeking signs or obsessing over the Antichrist. God desires us to keep our faith steadfast, focusing on him as our guiding light at present. A restraining force prevents the rise of the Antichrist. This force will eventually be removed, allowing the Antichrist to assume power temporarily. However, God will ultimately defeat and judge the Antichrist, as well as those who reject Jesus. According to Jesus, there will be great mourning when the Son of Man returns. Every eye will see him, including those who crucified him. During this return, there will be a separation of the righteous from the wicked, with the wicked facing judgment and punishment. Therefore, it is crucial to remain steadfast in faith, trusting in God's plan, and preparing our hearts to welcome Jesus' return. Throughout history, there has been a rise of false gods who exploit people's desires to hear what they want to hear. These impostors claim to speak on behalf of God, but are driven by personal gain, leading God's people astray from his true path. This issue was prevalent in ancient Israel, where God's people were guided by his voice, law, and priesthood. However, counterfeit prophets emerged, selling their services to kings and leaders, steering God's people away from his will and lining their own pockets. In conclusion, Jesus boldly exposes the unrighteous connections of false gods and their followers, warns us about the rise of the Antichrist, and urges us to remain vigilant, discerning the signs God provides. Rather than being consumed by fear or constantly seeking signs, we should focus on God, trusting in his plan and preparing our hearts for Jesus' return. False gods and their deceptive teachings have always been a threat. By staying rooted in the truth, we can navigate through their deceit and stay faithful to God's teachings. In the Old Testament, unscrupulous leaders used false gods to deceive and lead Israel astray. God dedicated a significant portion of the Old Testament to calling out these dangerous gods. Here are some of the sins that God accuses whitewashing. Instead of revealing the truth about Israel's sins, false gods would whitewash the truth, covering it up with something more comforting and encouraging. This approach was attractive to people who wanted to feel close to God without hearing anything challenging. Examples of this can be found in the book of Ezekiel. Delusion. False prophets lied to the nation of Israel. Sometimes they were coached to speak lies, but they often deceived themselves into believing that the things in their hearts were from God. God did not tolerate prophets getting it wrong. That wasn't true. They were lying. False prophets would align themselves against those who spoke for God. They could afford to do this because their message made them more popular than the genuine prophets of God. 
putting legitimate prophets in danger because people preferred the feel-good prophecies of these phony seers. False gods are not merely external entities. They can also lurk within our own imagination. God is not a vindictive, short-tempered deity who delights in hurling thunderbolts at us. While he desires to safeguard his holiness and administer righteous judgment against human wrongdoing, he also possesses an innate desire to show mercy. The Bible and Jesus affirmed that the rejection of God has consequences, but the emphasis is on his desire to show mercy. His mindset toward his creation is rooted in love, not hatred, and in grace, not spite. Therefore, when we speak of God, think of God, or talk to God, it is essential to have an accurate understanding of who he is. Regarding the time of the end and the coming of world peace Jesus' return, there are various difficulties in question. It is important to look at the world and the things around us to recognize when something becomes a false god. Perhaps the easiest way to discern a false god from the true god is by assessing the presence of good. That which is not good is not of God. A false god is something or someone that is worshipped, idolized, and willingly succumbed to despite not being good. A false god may seem promising, but in the end, brings devastation. When a person abandons their power to make decisions based on what is best for themselves, others, and the world, they effectively worship a false god. The truth of the matter is that individuals have complete control over their lives. The Spirit of God is within them, providing everything they need to live the life they desire. Whenever insecurities, anxieties, and fears dominate our thoughts and actions, false gods are near. Whenever we compromise with difficult truths, settle for deceptions, or engage in life's challenges with willful ignorance, we succumb to false gods. Whenever we attempt to make the mystery of the divine completely comprehensible, we inadvertently worship a false god. God's majesty and glory always exceed our grasp. The testimony of the Hebrew God, the proclamations of Jesus, and the witness of the early church resound with warnings against such idolatry. The key to identifying false gods lies in the recognition that anything can become a false god. Honesty, persistence, and wrestling with life situations can help us resist false gods. After recognizing the signs of false gods, it is crucial to protect ourselves. False messiahs and false prophets will appear, performing great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. There are simple things we can do to safeguard our hearts. We should stay committed to Bible reading, listening to those whom God has sent. By being connected to Scripture, we should also remain committed to community, not forsaking the gathering of believers, but encouraging and supporting one another. Additionally, spiritual growth through disciplines such as prayer, fasting, and worship helps us stay connected to Jesus and facilitates personal growth. Firmly established in our faith, it becomes much more challenging for someone to lead us astray. There are those in the world who would lead us astray, but as long as we remain connected to the vine, we are secure and immovable. God's people embrace their responsibility to defend the faith and protect the vulnerable Jesus has left us with both the mandate and the model to demonstrate that speaking the truth may not always win us friend. But it honors God and saves listeners from falling into the trap of deadly doctrine. As we conclude this captivating exploration, we invite you to reflect on the revelations shared by Jesus regarding the Kaaba and false gods. We've uncovered symbolic connections, traversed ancient warnings, and navigated the intricacies of prophetic insight. Our journey is not just a quest for knowledge, but an invitation to question, discern, and seek a deeper connection with the divine. Like, share, and subscribe to stay tuned for more thought-provoking content. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening voyage, and may your own journey of exploration and discernment continue. Until next time, Stay curious and embrace the mysteries that unfold on your path.